It's all about art, art, all about art, art, all about art, art with David art, 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 Reed, art, 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 Tom Galvin, and Joe Moore. Hey. Well, one out of three isn't bad, right? We got Tom <laughs> Galvin. Yeah, so where's uh, Joe and David? I, right. I, our best li listening audience is uh, tuning in and wondering, who are these people? Well, they're Alex Asena and Shantae Arroyo, who are filling in for David and Joe, mm -hmm. both of whom are otherwise occupied. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, nice working with you guys today. And we have a nice guest. Mark Bradley is going to be here. But I, can we start with a little bit of something about where David is? He's introducing uh, Rebecca Hood, I believe, for her last performance at the Burroughs Theater, last performance in this area. Yeah. Uh, she's moving to Washington State, the very talented uh, cellist and uh, string instrument uh, aficionado, or not aficionado, but uh, virtuoso, Rebecca Hood, is leaving our midst and doing a final concert. So that's where David is, introducing her tonight. And we just want to wish her the best and thank her for, uh, yeah, that's great. There she is, the beautiful Rebecca Hood with her cello. Uh, she's Grace Star City in, in our region with so much beautiful music, entertaining mm -hmm. stuff with the Viridian Quartet um, and by herself. Uh, just a wonderful person, wonderful musician, and we just wanted to give a shout out to her that uh, if you're listening to us, you're missing her concert right now. You can always <laughs> check us later in the week. but. Get over there and, uh, and go see her if you still have a chance. Uh, yeah. Rebecca Hood, we thank you for all the music you've given us. And good luck uh, down the road or up the road in Washington. Hey, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, I mean, excellent. Good for her. I know she just helped us out with uh, Songs for New World. Yes. Uh, she's been part of the Viridian Symphony forever. Yeah. Like, um, like, honestly, such a pillar of the community. And yes, she is going to be missed, but obviously on to bigger and better things. And hopefully she can make a call back every so often and be like, hey, yeah. how's everyone doing? Yeah. yeah, we have an example here, right, among our uh, MC uh, list of people. So somebody that of oftentimes or sometimes <laughs> when we're lucky comes back and graces the stages here locally. We're just talking about maybe Christmas, but, you know, we'll see. Um, got a good show for you today. Mark Bradley is our guest. Um, any intro, intro comments that either of you would like to make? Shante Arroyo, our co-host today. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Intro comments from Mark. Well, Mark uh, is a Yubaseta Arts and Culture board member, and he's also a fantastic photographer and graphic designer. So we're gonna we're gonna be getting into quite a bit about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm excited. I know I've known Mark for a very very long time. Mark has been taking pictures of me since I was a child, um, which sounds weird when I say it out loud like that. But <laughs> but in the yeah, explain the backstory ways. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, just because, you know, being so involved in the community and everything, especially with my mom running so many events in the city, um, I've been involved in everything under the sun. And so Mark has been there the entire time taking pictures and being involved in helping create the graphics for all of that. So we're going to get into all of that later, but he's got quite the breadth of of work and i can't wait to like have him on yeah and, and many of the pictures he's taken of you i'm sure when you've been performing uh hopefully and many of the other uh, acting things that you've done around this community so uh yeah mark's uh, mark's gonna be on with us in a little while yeah in, to, in the meantime um you know we're all performers you know we're all artists of one kind or another and uh there are critics we all know that we oh. can't uh live with them and we can't live with them <laughs> and so, uh, I just thought I would say some things. Uh, you know, I have a healthy respect for the role of the critic, especially with coffee. I'm sorry I threw that joke in, but I digress. Critics provide a service as they never tire of reminding us. Mm. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, they do offer useful information to the unsuspecting purchaser of a movie ticket uh, when the movie is a dud. But sometimes critics are the ones who, in fact, bomb themselves. And when classic movies stand the test of time and are considered great movies by the vast majority of people for years beyond the release of the movie, it's interesting to go back in time and revisit what the critics had to say about those movies when they were first released. And I start 
Uh, I'm going to jump out of order, uh, starting with the second one on your list, if you guys have a list. Got it. Uh, Shantae or, or Alex. Uh, at any rate, I'm starting with The Exorcist, which is considered, I believe, a pretty uh, a, a pretty good example of a, of a well-crafted uh, horror movie. Uh, but Vincent Canby of the New York Times, back in 1973, when the movie was released, The Exorcist said, A chunk of elegant occultist claptrap, the devil, it seems, for all his supposed powers, can't break and enter without sounding like the Laurel and Hardy uh, movie trying to move the piano. <laughs> so, yeah, so Vincent Campbell. Ouch. On that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ouch. Lawrence of Arabia, 1962, considered a classic. Peter, o, Peter uh, O'Toole's first major movie. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times said, Seldom has so little been said in so many words. <laughs> Now, we have The Matrix. Often, uh, many, many uh, people love The Matrix. I kind of like The Matrix. If anybody wanted, uh, but, but Bob Graham of the San Francisco Chronicle said, if anybody wanted to see Keanu Reeves shaved naked and covered in slime, now is the chance. Mm. He, he plays a computer uh, hacker who stumbles into a vague awareness that the world is but the dim reflection of a controlling cyber world out there. We know that Keanu is puzzled about which reality he currently occupies because he squinches up his eyebrows. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, he does that. That's uh, <laughs> his Just major, a few times. That's his yeah. major tool in his toolkit. <clears throat> I kind of agree about this one with pretty women. I, I thought, well, yeah. she's, you know, she's a sex worker and he's a kind of an arrogant rich guy. Why do we care about uh, their romance? But... Uh, Richard Corliss took it a little further, analogizing it to, they could bump this up if they want to have really unpleasant uh, people that nobody would like any place in the world to fall in love and he'd be that, be that, that be the subject of a movie. Uh, Richard Corliss of the New York Times said, no one has made romantic, a romantic comedy in which, say, a toxic waste dumper falls for a terrorist hijacker. They meet cute in an airport check-in line and she's got a bomb in her luggage. Then he says, but Pretty Woman comes pretty close to finding the least admirable characters to build a feel-good feel movie around. Um, so, yeah, uh, interesting point of view. Attack. Six, yeah, yeah. The Sixth Sense. I like The Sixth Sense. I like that movie. But Jack Matthews, uh, when it came out in 1990 time, uh, 1999 in the New York Times, sorry, New York Daily News, but of course nobody remembers him anyway. Who cares who he wrote for? They still remember The Sixth Sense, of which he said, I was not only surprised by the film's final twist, I wasn't even looking for one. I just thought I was watching a bad movie. So, uh, yeah, jeez. Wow. Uh, don't get on the wrong side of uh, Jack Matthews. Reservoir Dogs, tough Tarantino movie, very gritty. Uh, I thought it was a classic, but People Magazine said, here is the ideal date movie, assuming your date is a psychopathic sadist. Well, actually, there could, there could be some truth in that. No, no, no. <laughs> A uh, great classic, 1958, the great movie with James, uh, 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 oh my God, James Stewart and, and uh, Kim Novak, the beautiful Kim Novak, Vertigo, mm. wonderful movie, but Time Magazine said, you know, Hitchcock, the old master has turned out another Hitchcock and Bull story in which the mystery is not so much who done it as who cares. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. Shady. <clears throat> You know, these these critics, I, I don't know how often they're invited out to parties, but uh, I don't know. I, I, they, I guess we have to I have mean, critics. They probably invite them out just to try to be like, hey, yeah, hey you're please my best be nicer. <laughs> please, yeah. yeah, look, here's food for you. Here's alcohol. <laughs> Be nice to me. I would I would be a little bit nicer at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But critics, maybe not so much. Uh, mm. They might just uh, go home and write up how lousy the wine was. Anyway, the summary song this week is called The Stinking Song. I'm a critic. I'm critical. Some folks say I'm full of bull. Do something admirable and I'll just say it stinks. I'm a critic. I'm critical. If you believe you're theatrical, believe me, I'll be skeptical, and I'll just say you stink. I'll write a review of you, badmouth everything you do. I'll get paid for trashing you, and you'll be out of work. I'm a critic, I'm critical of films that became classical. And I look like a perfect fool, and some people will think that my opinions stink. Hey. Weird news, weird news for 225 or whatever it is today. 
<laughs> so we we have a good show lined up, and we should probably get to our guest unless there's anything else I missed in this introductory time. I know. I think it is time to bring on the illustrious Mark Bradley. Yay! Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Mark. hey. <clears throat> this is – those of you who don't recognize me, maybe now. No, there there, yeah, no, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the Clark Kent effect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, you are a you are a superhero within your own right, Mark. Uh, Mark, because you like done so much in and for the community. Truly, um, I mean, where do you even begin? Uh, let's. I mean, let's start with your origin story, since we're in uh, superhero mode here. Um, where are you from? The area? Did you grow up here? I went to Marysville High School and graduated a uh, a number of years ago. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Back when yeah. it was, there was only one high school in Yuba County, so that's how long. Ago it was. Back in the day, no, yeah. uh, that's great. So you've obviously grown up in the community then, and you've seen all the changes through it. Um, when did you decide to pick up photography and start that as like a, a medium for yourself? Um, I actually started uh, first started right out of college i got interested when i was a kid and i went to wyoming when I was 13 and it's like i had a little brownie camera and i came back and it's like i then someday i'm gonna have some i can take decent pictures of those kinds of things i just came back uh, from wyoming whereabouts were you in the tetons Taking in the wind river wind river, wind river range wind yeah, river yeah, wilderness. yeah 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 uh, a place for photography yeah not if you got a little brownie camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but, but I couldn't afford a decent camera until after I got out of college. So, mm. uh, so that's when I actually picked one up. That was in the film days. Yeah. And uh, my brother-in-law at the time uh, got excited about it at the same time and put in a dark room. So uh, that, if you've ever like watched your picture, like come in bloom into existence in the tray of liquid you know or it's like mm. <laughs> it's really exciting when it's it, especially if it's a good one uh, yeah. so that's i got into it then uh but then uh, you know things happened or my sister got divorced and i didn't have a dark room <laughs> access yeah. to a dark room anymore and <laughs> those two could have just gotten along better you know yeah <laughs> they weren't thinking of you at all apparently yeah <laughs> anyway, I did. I so uh, I didn't get back into it again until digital came along. Okay, oh. wow. Uh, so, yeah. so, so you had a you had a decent break there where you just kind of like stopped yeah. or yeah. When, stopped. when were you at the Appeal Democrat, Mark? Uh, if I was there for thirteen years and I left in two thousand thirteen. So I oh. guess there. Uh, to okay. start uh, so 13 years before that is when i started <laughs> 2000 uh, uh, actually, uh, to go back I, a little bit i'm curious to know about where you went to college and if you studied photography i went to uc santa cruz and i got my degree oh. in biology with an oh. emphasis in evolution <laughs> <laughs> hey so which is something that every every artist should have in the yeah. back <laughs> yeah because no, we all evolve as artists. <laughs> That's <funny>. right. <laughs> um, Interesting. Actually, I, when I went to college, I, I, you know, I was thinking about majoring in a, in an art, uh, and then I thought, you know what? But I also had this, you know, a love of science, I always have, and uh, I thought, you know what? I can buy a, some paints and study art on my own. I can't buy an electron microscope on my own, so <laughs> <laughs> so I went for my own instead. Priorities. You know? Yeah. That's too bad. I, I have one in the garage. I don't regret, could... I don't regret it. I think okay. it's, uh, good, good, good. Critical yeah. thinking informs everything. So it does. Very true. Very, very true. Um, so anyway, then when I picked up photography and digital, then I really started getting into it. And I had there was some call for it at my job. We were doing advertising design and marketing design, uh, and photographers were expensive, and so <laughs> so <laughs> and you I made your background doing it. So I started doing it there. Well, how uh, how did you make that jump there, Mark, from 
being in bio having a biology degree and then going into marketing graphic. and advertisement yeah and graphic yeah. design my my first job after after college uh after i decided i wasn't going to grad school uh, i got a job at a little print shop and uh, they had a big graphic arts camera and i started playing around with that stuff and uh, that's that's how that design started uh, mm. and it fell in with the photography because there's some things you can do with a big a big big uh, reproduction camera like that that you can't do with uh, with little stuff mm. and it's really high contrast i mean like there's black and there's white and that stuff so you can take a black and white picture of, you know a grayscale picture and uh, do interesting things with it. anyway uh, so well, that's how I got started doing design. That's great. Was, was your, <clears throat> excuse me, was your talent kind of growing along parallel with the emergence of new technology in the field, in the field of photography and graphics? I've always, I've always been a technology buff. Uh, I built my first website in 1995. <laughs> and that was when a website was <clears throat> words and some pictures. And that was yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing else. Uh, so it all kind of, kind of grew together. Uh, sometimes it was, uh, what was in demand is, as I said, I can do that. And then, you know, started figuring out how, <laughs> yeah. That kind of stuff. yeah, but you, if, if there's some new breakthrough in technology, do you think, think have a, like a bigger artistic vision? Oh, I can do this now that I couldn't do earlier with whatever the new development is. Is there um, been that kind of interaction with you and your, and the tools? The no, trade? not really. It's more just, uh, I, I, you know, as the need for something arises, then I like figure out how to do it. I'm really good at figuring out how to do stuff. Well, so, you're a scientist, so yeah. 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 I'll, uh, so Mark, anyway. What is, what is sociobiology? Sociobiology is the evolution of behavior. The evolution of behavior, yeah. You've got that. You also studied that at Santa Cruz. Right. How does yeah, that, that was, inform? How that does was that my actual emphasis, but nobody knows what it means, so I just say biology. <laughs> well, I, I could have taken a guess, but I thought, why should I guess when you can tell me? And I uh, just wondered <laughs> how that informs your artwork. Uh, it, you know, do you capture aspects of human behavior or attempt to do that in some sort of. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly try to capture human behavior, but I don't know if that has anything to do with uh, sociobiology per se. Um, well, I'll throw that question out the window and uh, we, <laughs> we won't come back to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, certainly, you know, taking pictures of birds, you know, learning how they behave is certainly helps. Uh, but I don't know that knowing how the, the behavior evolved is particularly helpful. I don't know. Probably doesn't much. <laughs> well, so. uh, I just thought I saw it in your uh, in your background right. on your uh, right. Facebook page, and I thought I would explore the sociobiological aspect of your life. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Shot you down, didn't I? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> sure did. I'm going to turn the interview now back to Alex and Shante. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, good. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I was actually kind of wondering the same thing that Tom was thinking, like. Um, in your photography now, do you focus in biology at all? Or I know you do a lot of like event stuff, but do you also like going out into the wildlife and, and in landscape and stuff? I do some of that. Um, landscape, not so much. Uh, I can't remember who it was who said, there's nothing worth photographing that's more than 500 feet from your car. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a famous photographer who said it was like uh, I don't remember who, but <laughs> and uh, obviously like, somebody owned a car. I I don't want to get up at three thirty in the morning to get where I have to be at sunrise to get you know like to wait for the perfect thirty seconds when the lights just right. And yeah, it's a lot of work landscape photography. Do you ju do you just delegate that? Do you just delegate that to Sue Growl? <laughs> no, no, because hummingbirds I can shoot in my backyard. So oh, okay, I've got I got a few hummingbird shots. <laughs> Just a shout out to Sue, who's another fine photographer who yeah. I think is up there at the crack of dawn and uh, she she yeah. starts shooting. She's 
Yeah. yeah. So I, I, uh, my landscapes tend to be more found landscapes rather than. I, I do have a shot of a barn that's on Bald Mountain Road that I pass every time I go to town. Uh, and I waited for like eight years to get the shot. Of, wow. I wanted a shot of that barn at sunset, with, you know, with a, a beautiful sunset behind it. And every day I drive by and no sunset, you know, no, <laughs> the light's all wrong, it's cloudy. Uh, finally, one day I came home, or I didn't have my camera a lot of times. Finally, uh, I came home one day and I could see that the, the, the sun was going to be a nice sunset. So I rushed home, grabbed the camera, ran back, you know, drove back down there. And uh, five minutes later, got back in the car and went home. And one of my favorite landscapes is that picture. It's a uh, wow. pretty spectacular yeah. sunset. And you wow. waited how long to capture that? Five years. It's like I drove by that barn. I love old. I love old barns, but not just a picture of old barn. I like it. I need to have some context that makes it yeah. more interesting. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so that gesture <laughs> that I was waiting for. Hey. I, we were talking before about gesture and how. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't remember who it was. It was a photographer who said that in photography, gesture is everything. Uh, and it was probably a, you know, a street photographer or somebody like that. Uh, and the gesture meaning, you know, it's like the, the, uh, the little fleeting, the little fleeting expression on someone's face or their hand movement or something that, that makes the picture, and if it would happen ten seconds, ten, a tenth of a second before, or a tenth of a second after, uh, it wouldn't. It, it would be. It would. The shot would be diminished, or not even be worth looking at. Yeah. Um, and so I've always that struck me at the time, especially when it said it. It uh, that even goes for landscape. And I had to think about that one for a while. Uh, but so anyway, so that's what I'm looking for when I'm shooting theater events or uh, music events or birds or whatever. Uh, I'm looking for that instant that makes the shot. Uh, there's that, that one of Joe. If there, there should be oh. one in there of him in that costume <laughs> where he's uh, that one. That's one of my favorite shots. Now, you know, a tenth of a second later, his hand would have been on her shoulder, and it wouldn't yeah. have been as effective. And that's literally your next photo on here. Yeah. Right. But, but that that millisecond difference right there. Right. It's the anticipation of, of him grabbing her that makes the shot. So good. And, so, and so that's good. the gesture I'm looking for. So and sometimes you see it when it happens, and sometimes you don't see it until later. Mm. But I try to anticipate them. So, uh, so if I know what's coming up, I can shoot a little burst and mm. see if I can catch the perfect. Uh, perfect. That's so a good you, one. You say your your favorite subjects are, are people, then. Yes. To shoot. Yeah. Okay. Professionally, mostly what I do is headshots. Gotcha. And portraits. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Lots of good headshots on here. Yeah, that first one right there is one of my favorites from our from the Arts Council's Veterans Project. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know, just like, how can you not like that face? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's yeah. just a, a great looking guy. I mean, and, there's uh, just so much story there. Yeah. And there's another one of his best friend uh, who's got a neck brace from, uh, uh, probably on there somewhere um he's right uh, got yeah right down there that, yeah larry how that's uh you know he just looks like somebody you want to sit down and have a beer with and find out what the neck brace is all about what, you know the hat with the vietnam vet on it or it turns out he had cancer from agent orange uh, mm. which is why the neck brace and you know he asked if i wanted to take the neck brace off when we shot that and i said no leave it on He's a survivor. Yeah. So. yeah. And I love doing those veteran shots. They were really great. 
Mm. And they were kind of like the epitome of what a headshot is all about, which is not, it's not about the lighting. It's not about the pose. It's none of that. It's getting the person to reveal themselves. Mm. Uh, you know, an actor, you can say, you know, give me your war face and they'll give you a war face, but it won't be a picture of them. It'll be a picture of their acting. That's right. right. Uh, so actors are re actually really hard to get good pictures of them. Uh, I mean, I would agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. It's easy to get good pictures of them acting because they're, they're used to be in front of the camera. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you asked me to to just be myself in front of a camera. That's a, I get real awkward real fast. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. You mean this, Alex, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah. uh, so anyway, so business and in business headshots, you got maybe 10 minutes tops. And sometimes there are people that they don't like getting their picture taken. And it's, they're the hardest people to get a good shot of because the reason they don't like their picture taken is because they don't like their picture taken. And so they look like they don't like they're not having any fun, you know. So uh, I wonder you just got to josh around and talk about their kids or their dogs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Find the little thing that makes them reveal themselves yeah uh, you got wow. 10 minutes and <laughs> yeah so. that's I, I wonder about that if people who say i just never take a good picture are part and parcel of the problem you know that it, they're, that's they're, exactly they're, right there there's anxiety in their face there there's yeah. some kind of a tightening gesture and the muscles around their, their mouth yeah. and uh so of course they don't look good because they're they're looking out in fear Right. It's not usually the our first, best pose. first thing you learn about taking pictures of that, those kind of people is don't talk about taking their picture. Yeah. Don't tell them yeah. to smile. Don't, you know, just like talk about their kids, talk about their, their dogs, find the subject that, that makes them light up and talk about that. And, you know, the whole time you're popping the camera off. Or, uh, yeah. Ideally, you're not standing with the camera in front of your face because that's a constant reminder. So have it on a tripod and uh, uh, mm -hmm. talk to them about something and catch them when they're. You also catch some really weird expressions that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah you just yeah. throw them out. <laughs> do you ever do you ever ask them to just like just act crazy, act goofy, and do you ever make some counterintuitive suggestion like that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you know the first three or four minutes you're like doing that kind of stuff, like finding out what it is that's going to get them to relax. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's like, my head's so big. I just hate my pictures because my head's so big or something like that. It's like, yeah. well, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll back up a little bit and it won't look so big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm not responsible, responsible for the evolution of your head. You know, you can say something <laughs> like that. And there we go. Uh, but it, yeah. it's really rare that, that I can't I can't actually get a picture that they're satisfied with. Yeah. Well, my so. wife's best pictures, the ones where she looks good, are the ones where she doesn't know pictures are being taken of her. Right. That's because exactly. she she just hates the camera. I hates being photographed. And it comes out that it's, you know, I, I just know it's something she's doing. Um, right. Not to throw shade on my wife, but she's a, a pretty woman. And, you know, always, yeah. and she's just never... Yeah, yeah. It work people who camera. don't have their picture don't like their picture. It's not. It's never because they're not attractive people. It's something else entirely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll they work with her on that. But, attention but, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You. Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Shanti. I I kind of wanted to go back to the to website building and, and graphic design because I know you mentioned you made a website at the, your first website in 1995. Uh, how did you get involved in in that aspect? I know graphic design is. It's difficult. Yeah. yeah. Very early on. Somebody asked me if I build websites, and I said, sure I do, and went home and started <laughs> figuring out how to build a website. Mark! <laughs> That's impressive, honestly. That's so very hard. impressive. Well, it, it wasn't that hard in those days because it was a pretty simple structure, websites. So. I mean, do you have? did you have to know any coding for that at all? Uh, well, it's not actually coding. It's markup, which is a okay. little different kind of thing. Okay. Uh, markup is just, you know, saying uh, it's a language that says make this font this color and this big and like that. So it's not, there's no okay. if then else stuff in it like there is an actual coding. 
later yeah. on the coding came along. So. Yeah. So did you ever have to get involved in that then? What's what's yeah, the, like, the evolution like, of graphic design that you've gone yeah. through? Yeah. Well, I, also when I was in college, I got hooked on computers. My first computer class was the year the Apple One came out. Oh wow! Uh, wow. And that so I was taking a computer class. Uh, it was called. Uh, uh, I don't remember what it was called. It was, it was basically a, a computer class for non-computer professionals, but people who were going to be using them in their work. Uh, so I took that. And, uh, that was in those days, there were no personal computers. Everybody had a, a an account on the, the mainframes at the school, and uh, you could go into one of the computer labs and work in there. So, anyway. Wow. My first so I, did have, I did have some programming and when my first computer was a Commodore 64 and I actually half wrote a wrote half a computer game on it using assembly code and wow. <laughs> okay uh, cool. and then it's like okay so that's how you do it and I got bored with doing it and <laughs> so it's half done the game's half done yeah. huh is, yeah the game is well, now still uh, half done yeah, I don't think it would even run on anything anymore. Oh, so, gee. Yeah, that I'm was sure we could find thing. something. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah could find an old Commodore 64 that's still working. I <laughs> so, yeah. I'm on it. The problem is nobody's got a disk drive that will read those big old floppy disks. <laughs> oh, I miss floppy disks. Don't get me started on that. Same, right? <laughs> yeah. I've still got some someplace. I do, good. too. I, I do, too. Yeah. Uh, Mark. I'm tired of redoing all my files on the, the whatever the next format of storage is going to be. Oh, awful. I think we're going to be stuck on the cloud for a while. So, <laughs> yeah. I want to yeah. talk to you about. Uh, you, we're both on the uh, Arts Council board, you and I, Mark. Right. And, uh, and I just wanted to talk to you about your history with Yuba Sutter Arts and Culture. Um, you you've done an awful lot of things uh, to let the community know what's going on artistically in town. Uh, through your graphic skills, you you created posters and and uh, uh, monthly uh, postcards that go out to us all. And I'm, what give us a little uh, tell us the history of your interactions with David Nabby and the Arts Council. Uh, wow. Um, actually, I started before Abby and David came on board. Uh, uh, Linda Plummer got me. Uh, got me involved because of, uh, yeah, was it, I think it was back when Way, Way, Way Off Broadway was uh, first started going. And that sounds about right. You got me uh, taking pictures of that, and then that got me involved in with the Arts Council. And then a few late years later, she, you know, asked, she nominated me to be on the board, and I said, sure, that sounds good. You worked with Linda, from what I understand. You worked with her. Right. When I worked at the Appeal, actually, she and I worked at what was called, uh, ultimately called WAG Media Group. It started yeah. out as, it yeah. started out as uh, you know, the AD agency, you know, they had Appeal Democrat. And then it went to WAG the Frog. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. Gosh. What was Wag the Frog? I saw that. Your Why Wag the Frog? I said, because Wag the Yard Bark would be stupid. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so then Everybody was using then, Wag the Yard Bark. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, then when Linda left and the new uh, person came in, she didn't like Wag the Frog at all. So we became Wag Media Group then. Uh, and that's what it was when, when I finally left. And, uh, when you became WAG Media Group, did people think that WAG was an acronym that it stood for something and it wasn't just like from WAG the Frog? <laughs> uh, probably, uh, although I don't remember anybody ever asking about it after that. Well, uh, they I knew always, WAG the Frog. And, yeah, so. I always remember uh, AD Agency because that was what I was used to when Linda was there. Right. Um, and then but everyone always assumed it was the Appeal Democrat Agency, but it wasn't that. It was it was its own separate it was, entity. It was a sep it was a separate entity that was owned by the Appeal Democrat. Yeah. Uh, to do uh, advertising, marketing, graphic design for outside companies, 
but not for the appeal, not ads, not materials for the appeal, just you know, general brochure, logos, you know, the usual list um, for outside agencies. Uh, so uh, we did actually very little at first, very little for the appeal. Later on, they asked us uh, to design some publications for them, uh, like I did the, the original um, Explore Yuba Sutter, oh. 99 things. That was you originally? That was your? That, that was my, I was the original <clears throat> one who designed that one. And they kept the same di design for years. I actually wrote a program that would export all those, all those uh, events, all formatted in place and <laughs> with all the colors and done. And uh, all we had to do was enter the data for the events. And then I, you know, and it was, it was a, it was before that was a tedious process because you had to like, if you had to insert an event, then you had to renumber them all because oh, they were yeah. consecutively, which oh. was a nightmare. So anyway, I thought there's, I got a computer in front of me. There's a better way. <laughs> so I wrote a little uh, export program for InDesign that would export the stuff all formatted. So I'm glad you were smart enough to figure that out. If I had been sitting in front of that computer, I'd have been like. We're going to have to do this the hard way. <laughs> you know, when I, I got to town about six years ago, and we asked our neighbor, of who we are friends with now, what do you do around here? And they handed us the copy of the 99 things. Right. And that was, it was really instrumental in us kind of looking around and getting involved with some things. So, I, you know, I, I, your involvement in that is interesting to me because that was sort of a starting point for me. Yeah. I thought it was such a useful, it still is a useful uh, publication. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on around here, and the 99 things helped me to uh, realize that early on that there were things yeah. to get involved with. So. Of course, these days everybody just goes online to find out where. Well, like, yeah, I still, I nice still like it having that. it in one place, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's in the same place at our house all year, and sometimes yeah. we check it and what's going on and look at see if we're doing anything, you know, that we've forgotten about. Or, but but just <laughs> generally, it's a it's a yeah. really good. Uh, it's access to a lot of information. Well, that yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. People loved it. I mean, all the all the groups around time. It got to the place where we had to like really make some strict yeah. rules about what would what would be put in there. We had to make sure that they weren't writing too long in descriptions, and that they were a local group. Not you know, we didn't do Sacramento. We didn't do Calusa. It was just Yuba and Sutter counties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You didn't want it to be 399 things. You just, no, yeah, it yeah. quickly, it quickly, I think uh, it was only 99 things the first year. <laughs> <laughs> so we added the and more, 99 things and more to do. Yes, because yeah, there, are that way more, we did. there are more now. There are just more make it easy. Now. Well, yeah, I mean, I wish I had, like, so. yeah, I, I wish I had something like that here in Boston, honestly, because I was looking for something to do this weekend. So, you know, I, I was, I literally actually thought I was like, dang, I wish I had one of those brochures yeah. right now to find something to do. <laughs> yeah. In but, Boston, you know, it would have to be three million in 90 days. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. just a few. Yeah. yeah. But, anyway, but, but like, it's, it's really cool how you were so instrumental in making that happen and uh, getting that program going and whatnot. So that's really cool. I think it's brought a lot of people together around different events. I think a lot yeah. of people have connected because of that publication. And so, yeah, thanks Definitely. to you for your part in that. That's a good thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm welcome. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Whatever. What, what, what other proper response is there? What, what big, what, what's your grand design? Any big projects coming up? What's, what's happening uh, creatively, artistically for you right now? Is it business as usual? Or is there something some of that's uh, or something coming my up. Business, sure. My business has been, since the pandemic started, has been very slow. We were like actually shut down, like you can't do that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, before that, I was taking care of my father with dementia, so my business had slowed down there anyway. So, uh, so right now, I'm just starting to get things going back. I just did a a big headshot job, like five full days of shooting, and uh, wow. like uh, 
I think it was like 70 headshots in that time. Oh, headshots. I thought you said headshots, and I was a little curious as to where you were going with that. But <laughs> I know you live up there in the foothills, but I don't know, you know just exactly what you're doing. <laughs> so, I'm sorry to interrupt. But <laughs> That's right. uh, so anyway, uh, things are just starting to, and I got to start getting some some promotion out there and get some go things going. Yeah. Well, you have a you you are a well known uh, person in town who is highly regarded. So I wouldn't think it's going to be a huge thing to get reconnected with uh, your base and. Uh, yeah. Start. Unfortunately, the things I like shooting most are the things that don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Uh, you know dance contests and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and applause performances. And <laughs> We're getting yeah. there. We're getting there. <laughs> I know. Plenty for you to do. So. No, I I, uh, I have fun shooting those. That's why I do them for nothing, except. Well, and it's appreciated. Uh, the artistic yeah. oh, community yeah. again owes you a good, great debt of gratitude for uh, the promo for the things that you let people know about. A lot of the things the three of us have been involved with, so we personally uh, are invested in your in what you do for Yuba Sutter Arts. Uh, it, yeah. You just, you know, you're, John, hey, you're the only one I don't have several hundred pictures of yet, so you're gonna have to get on soon. stage or something. Yeah, yeah, Shantae, right? it's we, coming, yeah. it's coming, I'm yeah, sure. My day of reckoning, <laughs> really, one of these days, Linda will point her finger at you, and oh no, <laughs> it's all it takes. It's all it takes. Once once you get the Linda finger, no offense, that's but right. You're, yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're in, you're brought in, you're brought into the fold. There, so. there, you, there's no saying low, no to Linda. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would want to. Who would want to? Yeah, really. So, um, yeah, you're getting the business back started again. How is your dad doing? He passed away in oh, April, oh. just after the pandemic started. He passed away. So. Oh, I see. It had nothing to do with the pandemic, but uh, mm -hmm. he was he was 93 and had dementia, and uh, he still knew my mother and still knew me because we were his primary caretakers. But other than that. He didn't know anybody. It was kind of a blessing that he passed away before it got to the, you know, the end stage of Alzheimer's. It's horrible. Yeah. Awful yeah. And your mom, is she still up there? Is she? Yep. She's she's 90 way one, and she's out, like I said, she was out baking a cake earlier. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said, she must have known we were coming. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I got all excited. I was like, ooh, cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it weren't a virtual world, we'd probably all uh, be in the oh, green room, nice. green room, eating cake after this. Yeah, but, really. Uh, it's a virtual <laughs> world. Is it so? The world's opening back up for you. You're seeing more po potential, more possibility for uh, for jobs yeah. and commissions, and you know, uh, things to do and things to things to uh, photograph. You're, That's you're right. Yeah. Getting back out in the game. Yep. How do you promo? Do you promo through the appeal or through uh, Craigslist? I or hardly do it all. I call people. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, probably, probably the if you want to look at my pictures, probably Facebook is as good a place as any. Uh, yeah. All the theater stuff and music stuff and uh, uh, yeah. dance stuff is all on my Facebook page. That's um, that's how I know something has happened in the Yuba Center community. Their Mark Bradley photo <laughs> dump, and all the people who got their pictures taken are tagging the pictures. So. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's me. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Sure enough. So, um, you're. I, we're hoping that uh, we get some audience picked up throughout the week when we go. Uh, if, if more people pile on and watch the show either through YouTube or Yuba Sutter Arts. Right. And so we hope we're another source of saying, if you want great graphic art done to promote your business or whatever you need it for, uh, you couldn't do better than to uh, to get in touch with Mark Bradley. And uh, how do they do that, Mark? How does somebody get in touch with you two? Uh, well, they call my cell phone or send me an email. Or uh, you can go to my website and use the contact form. Although the website's like it's got like three things on there. It's one of those the, the cobbler's kids have no shoes kind of things. It's, <laughs> it's very neglected. <laughs> uh, but well, you could just say that was your original. Find me on Facebook and uh, yeah, message me or whatever. Okay, Facebook. Facebook, social media. That's good. You could just say that the skim down uh, 
website is your original 1995 website, and you've just maintained <laughs> well, it for an antique, yeah. for its antique I don't think value. you could have done that one in 1995. But <laughs> <laughs> you were uh, working some magic. Well, you, we, you and I are going to see each other at a meeting on Wednesday night for the Yuba right. Sutter Arts. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, what else are we? Yuba Sutter Arts and... Uh, culture. The, culture, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to have the I, culture. I, yeah, I, I, I lack culture. I mean, that's so, <laughs> so I, I couldn't remember the word. Love but hey, we'll see you, and there's a lot of interesting thing going, things going on around town. How long have you been on the board now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Do you turn them out? Several, I years, several years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Are you still enjoying I that involvement? Four years, something like that. Are you still Am enjoying? Still Are you still I, enjoying that involvement? I do enjoy it. Yes. Great. I liked it better when we had meetings in face to face. It was like a chance to get out of the hills and. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that'll be coming back soon. It's. Uh, yeah. To be on the board is to be with a lot of different interesting people who are right. very various kinds of artists and uh, right. or politicians and that's an art form and right. it's not one I would choose but it's certainly <laughs> one that's uh, interesting but uh, yeah so uh, it's, those are good things to get involved with uh, and it's good to share a board position with you any final comments you want to say to uh, the ever expanding evol evolving audience that will evolve throughout the uh, week and into perpetuity Keep an eye on Facebook, on the Arts Council's Facebook page. There's always stuff going on. Uh, oh, yeah. And there's going to be more and more as we got the Sutter Community uh, Center for the Arts uh, on board now. Uh, so there's going to be lots of, lots of exciting stuff happening in the next year, I think. Indeed. Indeed. Any uh, final questions, Sante, Alex, any? No. Thank no. you so much, Mark. Yeah, thanks, for Mark. You're it's welcome. Been, it's been a great pleasure having you on, Mark. Uh, and, Thanks. You know, next time you're up to something and doing something uh, that uh, you want to promo and let people know about, please come back. Mm -hmm. Sure will. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Take bye care. Bye. Well, that was great. All right. Yeah. Good guy. A good it's nice man. to hear more about him. I've, I've only met him in person once, so it's always nice to hear more. <laughs> Interesting guy, low key guy. You know, he's not yeah. the kind of guy that advertises himself or puts himself out front. Uh, so. It's nice to bring him out front and hear all the interesting things he's doing. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Too true. Yeah. Love that. All right. Well, I think it's that time of day for the announcements. That's right. And we, we got, got a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, the list that David sent, you guys are busy. Yeah, yeah, and you know what's funny? This is only for early August and late July, so there's even more happening. Um, wow. So, like, all right. Mark, like Mark said, keep an eye on on Facebook because there's there's gonna be a lot more coming. But um, wow, yeah, I'll get us I'll get us started off here. So please, uh, upcoming this Tuesday is Artist Alchemy. We only had one this month, uh, and that's gonna be at 4 p.m. with Stony Meager, uh, who hey. is a well-known photographer in the community and a comedy uh, impresario. <laughs> so uh, many of you probably have seen him do open mic comedy. I think they were doing it at Steel House for a while, and now they, they potentially are moving to Sopa Thai. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think you can find more info on that on Stoney's Facebook page. Um, and he'll be on with David, and they'll be discussing a little bit more about what he does. Uh, as Tom mentioned, we have our U.S. Sutter Arts and Culture Annual General Meeting on Wednesday the 28th at 5.30 p.m. That will be at the Sutter Theater Center for the Arts on Plumas Street. And it's basically just a giant social thank you event for all of our members. Um, and it's a way for us to get together and we're going to have a members only vote for the new slate of officers coming in and a quick review of everything that we've done over the past year while looking ahead to see what's coming uh, for the rest of this year into next year. And the public is invited to attend. So even if you're not a member, feel free to come out. You may yeah. be a member by the end of it, but... <laughs> We I mean, so. thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's great. Like, if anyone sees this and this is all that you get out of this, I would honestly highly suggest that you attend this meeting, Please. just because, like, not only do you get to hear everything that they've done in the past year, which is a lot, by the way, in case you haven't kept up with Yuba Sutter Arts and what we're currently doing, you know, virtual stuff. They've did a lot over the pandemic, um, but upcoming with plans for the theater and everything that we just acquired, 
I cannot wait. So definitely the meeting to be at. Be there or be square. Yep. Square. Exact. Yep. Thank you, Alex. You're and welcome. we have so much happening. We are planning our opening for September. Granted that nothing changes. Um, yeah, but we're going to slowly get the ball rolling and you'll be the first to know everything at that meeting. So please come out. Yeah. Um, in beginning of August, on August 3rd, we are collaborating with the Downtown Business Association uh, for a national night out on Pluma Street. And that's from 5 to 8 p.m. where we celebrate national night out. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of businesses opening. And uh, I believe we'll, actually the Chamber of Commerce is also our, a collaborator for us on this one. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Maserol will be performing with uh, Rich, her, her bandmate Richard for Everything Nice uh, at the Sutter Theater Center for the Arts. And we'll even have a street piano in front of the theater so you can play a tune on it maybe and take a tour. I know a lot of people couldn't make it to our, our opening so this is a perfect chance to get that done. Yeah. Richard, uh, which, Richard was a guest on my songwriter, Spotlight on Songwriters That's show. Right. Excellent songwriter, excellent guitarist and singer. And with Alex, uh, they, they're just fun. It's mm -hmm. very up-tempo, very fun. Uh, they're just great, uh, great performers. Uh, so if for no other reason to go to this thing, which is there's all kinds of reasons to go to this, but exactly. go check out Richard and Alex. Uh, that's, that's a good act. That's a yes. lot of fun. Love that. Good for music. Sure. Yeah. Uh, also in early August, we have Poetry Hour, Notes from the Field, with our host, Marcelo Hernandez Castillo. He is the Yuba Sutter Poet Laureate as well. And every month he invites a poet on to just share uh, you know, uh, their experiences and, and get more of an understanding for their creative process. So it's great for any aspiring poets to come on and learn a little bit. We've had some really, really great ones. Uh, that's happening August 4th at 5 p.m. virtually. Uh, then we have on August 5th at 6 p.m. open mic night, and that is with Tom Galvin. Tom, do you want to talk hey. about it a little bit? Just inviting people to come out. The, the audiences have been thin, uh, and I, we've got so much going on with Diane's poetry show and Marcella, Marcella's uh, poetry show. And uh, so uh, I'm not getting a lot of people, but the uh, last two times I didn't get anybody except one woman from um, Louisiana came on and she was like a world-class poet. The next month, not too many people, but I had a young woman, excellent poet from Japan, who hey. happened to be up in the middle of the night looking for things to do and she got online, started scrolling, she writes poetry, she found us and wow. uh, she wound up uh, reading her poems in, in somewhat broken English, but beautiful poetry. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we've had these two kind of really interesting experiences on a show that nobody's come to. So Aww. I've been fascinated by it. I mean, I'm not, uh, I, you know, we're not, I'll do whatever I can this time to generate more interest, get in touch with some people that maybe doesn't know, don't know that we're still doing this and uh, pump it up. But uh, we've had some very interesting experiences. Uh, That's so cool. That yeah, is. yeah. Not much happening here, but out of the area, we're, uh, we're getting to be known. So wow. it's kind of a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom, for, for hosting that. Um, we appreciate that. It's a great way for people to come out. And I know in a virtual space, it might be a little bit easier for people. So if you're yeah, someone who gets open. nervous, yeah. um, you know, that, that might be the, the perfect thing for you to go do. You know, it's yeah. very low key. It's very mellow. So it's, it's perfect for that. Yeah. Um, uh, we have on August 8th at 4 p.m. another All About the Arts talk show. And um, I think we are just going to be going through events if I am seeing this correctly. Oh, Tom, you're going to be our guest for that one. I am? Yes. <laughs> <It's the first laughs> you're oh, yeah. Your book that you're, you're releasing <laughs> yeah, yeah. soon, right? I, well, I released a book last year in the pandemic. Oh, hit. The book right. signing was supposed to be in April at the, uh, at the gallery. And uh, that got shut down. So uh, in the meantime, I've collected a bunch of stories I've written over the years. And Gay and I have been uh, proofreading those and ramping them up a little bit, making some, uh, bringing them up to date. And I've got about 10 stories I'm pretty proud of. Uh, so that will be going in for publication in the next couple of weeks. And wow. I'll have two books to sell. Gay will be playing piano. Uh, my sister, who did the graphic art for uh, the first book and will be doing the cover for the second book, who's a, a pretty uh, highly regarded artist in the Bay Area, will be hanging some of her things. We'll have a, a showing of, uh, you know, a, 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 some of her artwork. So it'll be kind of a multi-tiered. I'll be reading a few things in the book. Gail will be playing some jazz back up. And, uh, 
and my sister will be showing her artwork and it's going to be a fun oh. it's going to take place in the uh, lobby of the Sutter theater which is a great space and uh, mm. yeah but we'll I guess I'll be the guest talking about that so I'll shut up about it right now we'll, yeah right <laughs> yeah don't give away all your yeah, secrets yeah, stealing my own thunder here exactly well I mean tune in guys we'll get lots more information on the next That's all right. about the arts here um, and the last big event that we have around mid-August is on August 15th. Uh, we are going to be showing the movie for our book, uh, our book, uh, Real Book Society, and that is going to be Alita Battle Angel. Um, we are reading the, the comic book and then watching the film. So it's a great opportunity for those of you who want to join us. Um, you can email Shantae at yubasutterarts.org uh, to get more information or to sign up. Please do. We're a small group, but we're a mighty group, um, and we're, we love to have more people. It's such a great idea to read yeah. and then to watch the movie and to do it in, you know, in sync with other people and, right. and have those conversations. And was the book better than the movie, or what was it about the movie that you liked? That's yeah. a great, great thing. And I, you know, I haven't taken advantage of it myself because I just, I'm thinking, can I add another book to what I have to read I know. for other things that I do? <laughs> but uh, yeah, really, I think it's got just a great thing you're doing, and I hope... I hope more people take advantage of that. Um, Here's yeah. my big question. Has anyone found that the movie was actually better than the book? As of now, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that yeah. was my biggest question. I'm like. That's, it's a tough one. It's a tough I th one. I think sometimes there is, there is a creative superiority about the movie. Sure. But you don't work as hard to experience the movie as you do the book mm -hmm. and when you've invested that much of your time in it you form a, a, a friendship with that book and so yeah. you know the movie you see that takes two hours as opposed to the book you read that took a month uh everybody's gonna <laughs> like the book better yes. yeah you're not yeah. wrong very yeah. true and everyone has their own perspective as they read and, and a, a film is really someone else's perspective yeah and you know yeah. you're not always gonna like someone else's I, there's yeah. a lot of comparison between stephen king's the shining and stanley kubrick's the shining I thought they were two separate artistic Absolutely. things. Absolutely, I agree. I did not think it was like a comparison. It was apples and they were two separate things. It was a story. Was they had a story in common, but the experience was entirely different. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what yeah. was better? I don't know if it's better or worse. But it's just different. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, Absolutely. we've got a couple other things it says here about look. Look at us, Yuba Sutter. Uh, yeah, we have uh, two announcements. So we have the Look at Us Yuba Sutter Film Festival. Um, and that is going to be the very first thing. Um, and we are accepting any films 13 minutes or less uh, within multiple categories. So take a look at that. And they are due by September 19th. So that, that's quickly coming here. Um, yeah. We will be showing the films at the Burroughs Theater on October 2nd. Um, and there will be awards given. And essentially what this is is, is uh, for a way to us to get some insight on, on um, you know, creating a film commission for the Yuba Sutter area. So it's a way to showcase our, our, our filmmakers and, and our actors and other artists and to, you know, kind of get the ball rolling on that. Yeah, so great. Please, yeah, I mean, That's great. We want amateurs. We want people who have done this for, you know, decades. We want everyone to come out and participate. We know there's a lot locally, a lot of people locally who are filming and making oh, films. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we hope everyone joins in. And the last announcement we have here is the Yuba Sutter Youth Mariachi Orchestra. And this is going to be a free program available to all Yuba Sutter High School students, anyone who's interested, beginner wow. or otherwise. Um, and this is done in collaboration with the Alliance for Hispanic Advancement. And, you know, we, we wanted to get started hopefully this summer, but we are still looking for more students to form a full group. So please, um, you can call for more information or email me at shantayubasetterarts.org and, and we can get you all signed up. Yeah, and so that, they, uh, they don't even have to have an instrument or anything? No. Um, wow. We will be providing instruments, training, and then down the roads, the outfits as well. So that wow. is free. 100%. Come on, people! How yeah. are we not? How is that not full already? I know. <laughs> yeah. we, we're what like an opportunity! There. Okay. So how many? How many pieces do you need in a full mariachi band? Um, from what we understand, we at, the, at least need twelve before we okay. can really get started. We are about seven in. Okay. Wow. So we just That's need five more, really. So That's come on, guys! So close. <laughs> yes. So close. So yeah. close. Yeah, so that's that's what's going on, and like I said, there's more coming in August, and we have some really fun stuff happening at the Sutter Theater at the end of August. So mm. keep an eye out. 
Excellent, Absolutely. excellent. We're an active little arts community here, and uh, uh, Alex, we wish you all the best on your new uh, on your new venture. Um, Thank you. And uh, we hope that you're keeping your creative juices flowing, and and that's because we need you to be creating stuff. You're oh. a wonderful artist. <laughs> Shante, thank you as always for all the good stuff you're doing. And I think that's it, isn't it? As yeah. we're yeah. just all winding down. We're winding yeah. it down. We'll be back in two weeks with uh, me as a guest. That's right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye. Bye.